Welcome to the ABCs of OER by Alicia Lynham Bowen. I am the Division Chair for Coastal Alabama's Library Services Division and serve as Director of Library Services for the Monroeville, Thomasville, and Gilberttown Campus Libraries. This presentation is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 license. OER has been a buzz acronym for a while, but do you know exactly what it means? Born from the Open Access, or OA, movement, OER stands for an Open Educational Resource. In order to qualify as truly open, an OER must be a free resource used for educational purposes where the author has granted future users permission to reuse, retain, revise, remix, and redistribute their work. So what exactly does that mean? With a traditionally published book, video, or other educational tool, we often use these items in a classroom under the Fair Use Clause under U.S. copyright law. We expect that we can only copy short passages, or that we may even need to purchase a special viewing license in order to share a video with our students. You certainly aren't supposed to copy and paste from the material and add in your own content. True open educational resources are freed from those limitations because the author has made her wishes known through a Creative Commons license. And don't forget about the public domain. Items published prior to 1925 in the U.S., for example, can also be considered OER since they are no longer protected by copyright. So you may be wondering, what exactly is a Creative Commons license? CC licenses provide ways that creators can choose to apply their copyright. U.S. copyright applies to your creations from the moment you commit an original idea or design to paper or an online document. And while fair use often allows educators a good bit of grace to use items in their classroom, some creators want their creations to be used beyond the fair use clause without having to grant permission for each of those uses. By tagging a work with a Creative Commons license, the creator is telling future users how they can use that work. If a work is licensed as CCBY, like this presentation, that means you are free to reuse, revise, remix, retain, and redistribute the work to your heart's content. The creator only asks that you give them credit with an attribution. There are a whole suite of licenses that best suit different types of work. But for OER, more open is always better. Of course, there are a whole host of materials on the internet that are free, but still fall within the standard expectations of copyright. These materials can still complement a course with a focus on OER. Technically, most library resources are not free, but they are free for our students and faculty to use. Technically, they are not considered OER under the most strict definition, but library resources, library course reserves, open access journals, and many YouTube videos can make wonderful additions to your class as you move away from traditional textbooks. If you need assistance with understanding just what falls under fair use, any of our library directors will be happy to help. It's also important to note which items are never OER. Since OER is such a buzzword in academia, Many traditional publishers have tried to create cheaper content that they market as an option for colleges that are moving toward adopting OER. While these cheaper options may be wonderful for our students, it is important to note that any content that is offered to students at a price is never considered an open resource. The only exception to this would be a printed course packet of the OER. Many colleges and universities work with their bookstores to offer these course packs for students who would rather view the material on paper rather than solely online. So now that we know what an OER is, you probably want to know where you can find them. OER repositories are a great place to start. OER Commons is one most recommended by the ACCS office. Indeed, the ACCS has partnered with AIC and the Alabama Virtual Library to create an Alabama hub within the OER Commons so that instructors from across the state can share content and collaborate on new OER projects. 
OASIS, which stands for Openly Available Sources Integrated Search, is another great repository which allows users to delve into the world of over 150,000 OER textbooks, videos, simulations, and even entire courses. While OASIS is curated by librarians at one of the SUNY campuses, Merlot is driven by an international community of users from over 1,000 institutions. This highly curated site offers more foreign language materials than any other OER repository. Instructors should also consider public domain repositories, particularly for literature and history classes. Project Gutenberg provides full text access to books that have fallen into the public domain, and LibreVox is a community of users who provide their voices to create Creative Commons licensed audiobooks for public domain books. Many OER materials cannot be easily found within a repository, however. Many instructors or faculty have licensed their works using Creative Commons, but their work has not been curated on one of the aforementioned sites. One way to find these resources is to utilize the Usage Rights Limiter in an advanced Google search. The Usage Rights Limiter allows you to find materials that are free to use or share, even commercially. These tools even work for a YouTube search or an images search. Need help with a more complex Google search? Again, don't forget to ask your librarian. The primary reason that many faculty choose to explore OER is to make their class more economical for students to take. We all know that textbook prices seem to rise each year. A 2015 study of almost 5,000 students across multiple universities and community colleges demonstrated that students in OER classes were less likely to withdraw, were more likely to be enrolled in more classes, and were more likely to receive a passing grade than their peers in the control group, which were enrolled in classes using traditional textbooks. Students in today's economy often have to make difficult choices. Indeed, they may have to choose between buying a textbook for their class or having the money for gas to drive to that class. Finally, choosing OER can allow you, the instructor, to have greater flexibility with the information that you present to your class. We all know that it can be a pain to adopt a new edition of a book, and we often have to wait multiple semesters to make changes. With OER texts, outdated information can be easily adapted or corrected without the need to go through a traditional publisher. And finally, let's burst one common myth. OER supporters get asked all the time, how do you know that your material has been rigorously vetted? Honestly, we should ask that of all of our materials, regardless of price or licensing. The map in this slide is taken from a textbook currently in use at Coastal Alabama. As you can see, Mississippi is mislabeled as Alabama. One mistake, of course, does not negate all of the good work in the textbook. However, it does illustrate that we should all continually evaluate the resources that we use in providing an education to our students. As more institutions across the world have joined the OER movement, all of the materials that you find in repositories have experienced the same level of peer review that we expect across academia. Are you ready to talk about OER? Please feel free to reach out to me with your OER, copyright, fair use, or Creative Commons license questions. Again, my name is Alicia Lynam Bowen, and my email address is alicia.lynam at coastalalabama.edu. Thank you for listening, and I hope you will enjoy exploring the world of open educational resources.